Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to InfoGamer. For this lesson, we're going to keep building our tic-tac-toe game. In the last video, we showed you how to increment the player's scores whenever one of them wins a game. In this video, we want to add a rematch button to our game and then have some code behind it so that whenever that button is clicked, it'll reset our game except for the player's scores. And so let's get to it. Alright, so here we have our project open inside of Unity, and the first thing that we want to do is create the rematch button. And so to do this, I'm going to right click on our canvas game object, go down to UI, and then select button. We can then rename this button game object so that it says something like rematch button. The next thing that we can do is set the transform for this button, and so I'm going to go to our scene view and then click the 2D button and I'm going to use the move tool with the button selected to reposition this button in the bottom right corner of our screen. And then I can use the inspector to put in some solid numbers for its position. So maybe something like 650 for the X and for the Y we could do negative 400. Next we can change the actual size of our button. So I'm going to set the width to something like 300 and the height I'll set to 100. The next thing I'm going to do is add a little color to our button. So I'm going to use the image component and just change the color to something like a solid green. Now that takes care of the button itself, but the text that's a child object to this button is impossible to read. And so I'm going to expand this button and select the text game object. We then need to change the actual value of the text so that rather than saying button, we'll have it say rematch. The next thing that we want to do is make this text a little easier to read. And so I'm going to first select this best fit checkbox, and then I'm going to change the max size to something like 100. But now you can see that the text takes up the entire space or the entire width of our button, which doesn't look too good. We want to have a little bit of white space going around the text. And so I'm going to change the left and right positioning of our rec transform to something like 5, maybe even 10. Now that looks a lot better, but it's still a little hard to read because a gray text on a green background doesn't really work visually. And so to fix this, I'm just going to change the color of the text to be a solid white. Now that looks a hundred times better. The next thing that we want to do is create the code that we're going to attach this button to reset our game. And so let's go ahead and open our game controller script. Now to create this rematch button function, all we really need to do is reset some of these variables to their initialized values. But before we do that, let's go ahead and create the actual function. So I'm going to scroll down to the bottom. And this function is going to be a public function so that we can access it with our button and it's going to be of return type void and we're going to call it rematch. We can then add parentheses and curly braces. Now a lot of this resetting we've actually already started to create within our game setup function. So if we scroll up to our game setup function you can see that we are already initializing the who's turn and the turn counter to zero. We are also setting the turn icon so that it displays that it's the X player's turn. We are resetting all of the tic-tac-toe buttons so that they're all blank inside this for loop. And we're initializing all the elements of the mark spaces array to negative 100. Now we could just make this function public and add more to it and then pair this function with our rematch button. But because we're calling this function within the start function and we don't need to do everything required for a rematch within the start function, I think it would be best for us to just leave this function and actually call this function within our rematch function. And so that's what we're going to do. I'm going to type game setup and then parentheses and semicolon. This will make it so that when the rematch button is clicked, it will actually run the game setup function. And that way we don't have to retype everything from the game setup function within the rematch function. And now what we can do is add the rest of our code after the game setup function. So before we add any more code to our rematch function, let's scroll up to our variables and look at what's already been taken care of with our game setup function. And so within our game setup function, we're resetting the who's turn and the turn counter variables. We're also resetting the turn icon so that it displays the X player's turn. We don't need to worry about the player icons because those never change. 
we are resetting the tic-tac-toe spaces button so that they have blank images. And we are also setting all the elements of the mark spaces array to negative 100. So really all that's left is the winner text, the winning lines, and the winner panel. Now we don't need to do anything with the winner text because when we hide the winner panel, it will also hide the winner text. And the winner text is updated every time a player wins the game. So it doesn't matter what it says prior to a player winning the game. Once they win, that's when it will change. And so all we have to do is disable the winner panel and then disable the single line that was turned on from the winning lines array. So to handle the winning lines array, the safest option so that we know that all the lines will be turned off is to for loop through the array and disable every element contained within it. And so within our rematch function, let's create that for loop. So we could say for int i equals zero semicolon i is less than winning lines or line dot length and then semicolon i plus plus and then inside this for loop what we can do is we can say winning line square brackets and inside the square brackets we type i for the index and then we could say dot set active and set it to false now the last thing that we need to do is disable the winner panel and so outside the for loop I'm going to type winner panel dot set active and then put false inside parentheses and semicolon. Now the only variables that we are not reverting back to their initialized values are the player score variables and the player score text variables. And the reason why is because we want to keep a running total of the score. Now we could create another button called restart and when that button is pressed we could then restart everything. And in fact, that's actually a pretty good idea, and let's do that. So we already have created our rematch button. Now let's create a function for restarting everything. And so I'm going to scroll back down to the bottom, and we're going to create another public function. It's going to be of type void, and we can just call this restart. Now within this function, all we have to do is call the rematch function. And so I'm going to type rematch parentheses semicolon and then we need four more lines to revert those four variables back to their initialized values and so the x player score I'm going to set equal to zero the o player score I'm going to set back to zero and then we want to get the x player score text variable and then we're going to say dot text and we're going to set it equal to quotes zero and then we can do the same thing for the O player score text variable dot text and set it equal to quote zero. Now let's go ahead and save this, go back to Unity, and then let's create a restart button by duplicating our rematch button and moving it up vertically. So something like negative 275. Let's also change the name of this button so that rather than saying rematch button one, it says restart button. And then we need to also change the text value of the child object so that rather than saying rematch, it says restart. Now all we have to do is set the on click for each of these buttons. So I'm going to click this plus sign and then I'm going to select our game controller and drag it into this field here. I'm then going to use this drop down menu and select game controller and find restart. I'm then going to select our rematch button and do the same thing. I'm going to click this plus sign. I'm then going to select our game controller game object and drag it into this field here and use the drop down menu to go to game controller and then rematch. Once we have these buttons set, let's go ahead and test our game. So I'm going to start by having the X player win. And there we go, we have the X player score incrementing. Let's go and click the rematch button and that resets everything. And now what we can do is we can have the X player win again so that we can see whether the score increments to two. So let's go ahead and do that. And there we go, the X player score now says two. So that's all working. 
And if we hit rematch, it works again. Let's have the O player win this time. And that's working as well. Now let's go ahead and hit the restart button and see if the player's scores revert back to zero. And they do. So everything is working properly. Now that's everything that we're going to cover in this video for the rematch and restart buttons of Tic-Tac-Toe. We hope you're able to follow along and that everything made sense. Make sure that you leave any questions you have in the comments below. Also make sure that you like this video and subscribe to our channel so you can get regular updates when we publish new videos. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.